Hello everyone, welcome again. Uh, so in this tutorial, we will continue of what we start in the last two tutorials. Where in the first one, we have learned how to enter the data. Okay, enter the data from our experimental result. Okay, into a simulink to further uh, do simulation. Then we have learned how to uh, condition the signals. Okay, and in this tutorial, we will learn how to. <coughs> sorry, we will learn how to uh, convert this signal into uh, electrical voltages uh, in order to use it to recharge a LiPo battery. Okay, so we have uh, stop until here in the last tutorial, and let's continue from here. Okay, let's close this one. So as we can see here, until here. This all is still a signal, signal condition. Now we want to convert it into a voltage, electrical voltage. Okay. In order to, con to convert it into a voltage, we need a block called controlled voltage source. Oh, no, not this one. Control. Yes. Okay, we need this block. Let's flip it. Okay. So this block will be converting our signal, our signal here, into uh, electrical voltage. Okay. Let's configure this. We don't want AC or want DC. Initial zero. We just follow the signal. And okay, no measurement. Okay, so from here, the output of here, we can see here there's a positive and negative. It means it's act as a voltage source that's controlled by our signal. Okay, let's ground this, this end. We go to the ground. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This one, no. So we have to know the correct component you are using. Yes, this one. Okay, we ground this. Now we measure that. Now, if you see, if you call scope, you see you cannot connect directly to the scope anymore. Why? Because this is a voltage, electrical voltage, not signal anymore. So you need to measure the voltage. You need to measure the voltage by using voltage measurement block. Now we can connect this. We connect this to the ground, the other end connect to the ground. Okay. Now we can measure the signal using our switch code. Okay. This block will measure the electrical voltage from here, and this one will convert the signal, input signal, into electrical voltage. Now, if we open again, measure. Um, that guy must contain. Ah, power, we need a power GUI. Power GUI. Okay, and here to make it faster, I advise you to change it to a discrete one. Okay. Boom. Okay, we can see now is exactly the same signal we have generated here, but in this time is in an electrical voltage. Okay, now what we can do more? Now we want to recharge a LiPo battery. Let's see this one. So from here, we have to include a LiPo battery. Okay, we need a battery. Okay, in order to recharge the battery, we just connect. Let's, let's flip this. Let's flip, 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 block. Left, right. Uh, yes, we just connect this one here in order to recharge it. Ah, sorry, we cannot connect like this because this one is a this one signal already. We can connect only to a scope. So let's bring this one here. 
you have to connect it to here. Okay, so this one is the electrical voltage. Okay, we need another ground here. To ground the another terminal and also we need to measure uh, sorry to read the, the measurement inside okay we need to decode this bus so use bus uh, decoder oh sorry bus selector select yes bus selector bus selector uh, let's bring this one here okay so this is a bus selector from here we can Select which one this one is just delete delete. We can select the SOC current and voltages. Okay, good. Here we need scope to read the battery information. Okay. Okay, good. Now let's set the battery. So the battery, the many uh, nominal voltage, let's say 3.3. By the way, the, the battery voltage should be less by 1.5, oh, 1.2, 1.5 volt than the source. Okay. So I mean, if you want to charge the, if you want to charge this battery from this source, so this one because there are the source to, re to recharge this battery, this source should be higher than the battery by about 1.5 volt. Okay. So let's say this is 3.3 volt because here this one we have set to yeah 4.45 so this one should be 3.3 should be okay oh sorry okay 3.3 I say one amp hour now in order to recharge it we should assume the initial SOC state of charge should be not fully charged I say 10% only okay. Because it's already fully charged, then no need to be recharged anymore. So we assume it's 10% uh, only. The SOC is only 10%. Okay. Now let's see what happened. This one no need anymore. And this all no need. Okay. Now let's see how our system behaves. Okay. Now we can review back again. Signal, condition, convert into electrical voltage, charge the... Uh, battery. We double click here and we change the layout view to 3 volt. Okay. So we can see here, we can see here the battery is already fully charged to 100% very fast. You can see here, this one in this area, the battery already charged very fast. Why? Because the current will be very high. The current will be infinity from this source. This source will convert to voltage, but the current will be very high. So we need to first limit the current. Okay? So it will not be charged very fast. Second, if you see the SOC, when it's charged... Uh, okay, before we SOC, let's see the signal first. Let's see the signal first. Um... We need scope. Okay, let's turn our signal again. So let's see here, when the signal is 4.5, about 4.5, it's already recharged to 100% and finish, I mean, finish fully charged. Then when the signal go down, okay, the SOC also go down, the voltage also, why? Because when this one go down, it just like, this one will become zero, it's meaning short to the ground, so it's just like it's discharging the battery again, okay? When the signal go down, discharging again to the zero. Okay, at the same time, very fast of charging the battery. This one, because there is no protection circuit between the source, voltage source, and the 
unfortunately. The first protection source is we need a diode to isolate to isolate this source from the load or from the bed. Better considered as a load to the source. So we need a, what we call free wheeling diode. Oh, sorry, not free wheeling diode. This one we call it o ring o ring diode. Free wheeling diode. We use it for the induction load. Okay, for here we call it uh, O-ring diode to isolate the load from the source. Okay, so let's add the diode first. Ah, diode, diode, diode. Yes, need this diode. Uh, okay, okay, okay. The snapper, we need infinity and infinity here. No need measurement. Yes. Okay, we need a diode here in series. So now let's see what will happen. So now we should see it's still fast, very fast. Uh, sorry, it's very really fast, right? It should be recharged again very fast, but we shouldn't see this one again. Okay, because this one in this area, the diode will be blocking the voltage from going back to the source. This one. In this this area we can see only go very fast charge and still constant to fully charge here we go okay so we have solved the first problem we have solved the first problem already, but we still, this is, is very ideal setup. Why? Because the source, we will not find a source like this in a real, uh, in a real world, whereby it can deliver very high current, okay? Very high current that make it, make your battery will be charged very, very fast. So we have to reduce the current to see uh, how, how it's charged and discharged. Uh, in a slow time, so we need a resistor. We need a resistor we call RLC branch. From RLC branch, we need R only. Where let's say, let's say, let's say, we ohm. We put a resistor in series. Now let's see. Yes, you can see now slowly charging takes long time to be charged. <clears throat> and, so, and also, it's good to be mentioned that usually, as long as there's no load to the battery, okay, let's finish first. Okay, as let, let, let's talk about the current here. This is the current from the battery. As long as you have no load to the battery, you see, there's no load to this. This is the battery terminal here. As long as there's no load here, so the current should be zero. The current should be zero. But if there is a load, let's say you add a resistor or any load here, the current will go positive into upside, positive, okay? But if you're charging the battery, okay, you adding charge to the battery, the current will be negative. You see this negative voltage, or sorry, negative current is mean the battery now is accepting the, the, the charge from the external source, not supplying Supplying is mean positive current, negative current is mean is being charged. And also we can see the SOC is increasing and increasing. But now in, in order to see how long it takes to be full to 100%, we have to increase the steps here. Let's say let's add another zero. Okay. Okay. So the first uh, voltage available, or the first energy available, is charged up to about 27% uh, of SOC. Now we can see the other one. It will charge it up to 47% yeah, again. And we can see here, when it's charged, as we say, it will be negative. 
when it's not discharged, neither discharge, neither uh, uh, or charge or discharge. I mean, no, no charge the battery, no discharge the battery. The current will return back to zero. Okay. You see our pulse is here. Whenever there's energy, this pulse actually is here. There's a pulse here, pulse here, pulse here, pulse here. Pulse. This is the pulse where, where the battery is recharging now. Okay. This one is mean battery doing nothing. Okay, almost 100. Yes, I guess the battery is already fully charged at about 200,000. 200,000 seconds. Let's close this. Yeah, here. 200,000 seconds. You can see here is the first available energy to recharge the battery, then stop, zero, then recharge again, then stop, zero, recharge again, Okay. Okay, so while we're waiting for this, let's talk more about our circuit. Yeah, so this is the general circuit of how we convert from our data, from our experimental, condition it, then we convert it into a voltage, uh, electrical voltage signal to recharge our battery and also how to protect the feedback signal from our battery back to our source when this one go to zero due to the uh, due to the lack of the energy from our from our signal here that we already entered and also how to not let all the current or the hundred percent of the current supply to the battery to to fast charge the uh, battery Okay, so then in the future maybe we will learn how to add more load or how to synchronize how to synchronize our load with the available energy. Okay, for example, if there is available energy to recharge the load, uh, sorry to recharge the battery. Okay, you can see here for the charge 100%. So when there is energy here to charge the battery, we will disconnect the load. When there is no uh, energy to recharge the load, then we connect our our load again to uh, use the, the energy stored in the battery and so on. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, we have uh, reached to our end of this tutorial. I hope you have learned something new from this. Uh, please leave a comment for me if you need uh, further clarification or have any doubt into this series of uh, battery simulation using MATLAB Simulator. Thank you very much and see you soon.